This is the Lilly Solid Body Electric Guitar, a build I completed in 2011. The year before, I was working on a recording project and felt the need for a single coil guitar sound, similar to a Fender Telecaster. Although I own this vintage Gibson Les Paul, and its voice is beautiful, it has two humbuckers, and that's about as far from a telly sound as you can get. In the end, the part on the song that I wanted the telly for was better suited to the chime of my electric 12-string guitar. But the desire to have a solid body on hand stayed with me. Years earlier, I had fashioned a fancy neck to be used as a replacement on a five-string banjo, making it a six-string instrument, similar to a vintage Gibson band guitar. I completed the neck and switched it out for the neck on the banjo. And as much as I tried to like it, I just wasn't happy with it. I reinstalled the original banjo neck and found myself staring at this beautiful but bodiless guitar neck lying on my workbench. Then I remembered needing a solid body guitar. And before I knew it, I had a working plan with sketches and a parts list. One of the best parts of designing a custom guitar is adding personalized details you might not find on a typical production line instrument. The Lily guitar has several, like a built-in tuner, my last name inlaid into the headstock, and a very special tailpiece. My granddaughter Lily was born while I was working on the guitar, and so I inlaid her name in Mother of Pearl. The build was completed in 2011, just in time for her first birthday, represented by the 2011 penny. During the build, I took many pictures and posted them online. A few of the online photos were picked up by Premier Guitar Magazine and featured in their print magazine and their online e-zine. A photo also appeared in Vintage Guitar Magazine with its namesake, one-year-old Lily. I owe a big thank you to my friend and bandmate, Patrick Raymond of Raymond Guitars, who provided me with a wealth of knowledge and experience during the build, not to mention several hand-picked pieces of tone wood from his supply, use of his workshop, his tools, and his spray booth. So now, let's take a closer look at this unique electric guitar. The body of the Lily guitar is made from a solid billet of mahogany, resawed and bookmatched. Mahogany is the same wood Gibson has used for guitar bodies since the beginning. Two cavities were routed into the body, one to house the electronics and one for weight reduction. I topped it with a bookmatched figured curly maple cap. The neck is created from three pieces of wood glued together with opposing grains. The center is mahogany and the two outer layers curly maple. The opposing grain helps keep the neck stable under the stress of the strings and it also looks great. Lily has an inlaid ebony fingerboard, an ebony truss rod cover, and ebony headstock veneer on both the front and the back. The body is rounded over on the back and bound on the front with a layered binding of black fiber and curly maple. I also used a thin layer of ebony for the control cavity cover 
and the surround for the rear string ferrules. All of the hardware is gold plated. The tuners are my favorite old style Cluson Ivroid Keystone units, like the ones you find on vintage Gibson guitars. The heavy cast bridge came from Stuart MacDonald and incorporates long throw saddles for precise intonation, and the strap locks are from Schaller. The neck pickup is a Fender unit, similar to a Tele pickup, finally giving me the voice I had been looking for. The bridge or lead pickup is a high-end TV Jones humbucker, a replica of the old-style Gretsch Filtertrons. It faithfully captures that vintage Gretsch sound, and much more. Both have inlaid pickup rings made from ebony. There are two volume and two tone controls, a set for each pickup. I used a standard three-way selector switch for quick switching between pickups. Full forward is neck pickup only. Full back is bridge pickup only. And a middle position selects both, blended with the two volume controls. Pulling up on the front volume control shuts off the main output to the amplifier and switches on the built-in end tuner for silent tuning. Once tuned, popping down the knob turns off the tuner and sends the signal to the amplifier again. The end tune tuner is powered with a 9-volt battery hidden under the tailpiece cover, which is held on with small magnets, allowing quick and easy access for a battery change. Mm -hmm.